Hello, my name is Aisha Harley, and I am one of the founders of the Visionary Leaders Collective, and it is my absolute pleasure to welcome all of you to our podcast, where we honor the gifts of the earth and dive deep into wellness solutions using essential oils and other medicinal plants. If you would like to learn more about our community offerings, please visit www.hellovisionary.life. You can also check us out on Instagram and YouTube. In addition, we would be very grateful if you would take the time to give us a five-star rating on this podcast. We have incredible topics each week, so be sure to come back and bring your friends. Today, we are discussing essential oils and skincare. We will be sharing some of our favorite DIY recipes to keep your skin both healthy, protected, and nourished. We will be discussing the importance of addressing your skin health from the inside out, and we are excited to highlight our new doTERRA sun care line. If you are new to essential oils and doTERRA, please know by the end of this call, you will know the three cool things about essential oils, the three ways to use essential oils, why doTERRA is set apart from all the rest, and how to get these beautiful oils into your home at the very best price. I'm going to hand the floor over to Dr. Josie, and she is going to introduce our guests. Hey, Aisha, thank you very much. So I just want to go over um, what we're going to be covering in the call today, because we're kind of going to go right into a discussion with our special guest, Contessa Beth, and she's going to introduce herself, because I uh, we, we decided that we we're gonna start doing that because we like people to be able to really uh, speak about their talents and their strengths and what they are doing from their own voice. So, but in today's call, you're gonna get a wide discussion around sun care and skin care. And we wanna dive into essential oils and how we use them in our skin care and our sun care. Um, but before we do that, we want to kind of get into a talk around the skin and different aspects of that. And some of the questions we're going to be covering is, why do you want to prevent sunburns in the first place? What, what are sunburns? What is happening in your skin when, you're, when it gets burned? What's involved with that? And let's say you live in a place like Portland, when we only have like three months of sun. <laughs> so you live in a place where there's not, where it's really cloudy. Like, do you need sun care during the other eight months of the year? What's going on there? Are there other things happening? Is there toxicity involved? Um, is there something where we want to be working with foundations underneath the skin to help the outside of the skin? And then we're going to be really bringing in what's going on with our sun, new sun care line. And Contessa Beth is gonna be sharing with us from her beautiful wise wisdom about oils for rejuvenating the skin, helping to reverse sun damage, keeping the skin, preventing the skin can, from getting damaged and keeping it in a really beautiful and healthy place. So I'd like to kick the call off and start now with I think a little bit of conversation with myself and Dr. Louise Rose she's here with us, welcome, welcome, about this kind of idea of um, what we need to, that the skin is the top layer, right? But really there's an importance of a foundation of underneath that and this idea of inside out, that what we do on the inside also reflects on the outside. And I'd like to just first talk and then I'm going to bring Louise in because she's so fabulous at talking about this as well. And I can just say as a naturopathic physician, everything I've ever seen and done with patients, with my other um, colleagues, friends, myself personally, is that there is such a connection on the inside of our entire gut of how our um, entire system is functioning 
as to then how our skin is able to deal with any kind of insult. And that's what sun is. We have these rays, the different bands of UV, UBV, we break them down. But really, they're, it's radioactivity and it hits our skin and it is causing in a general way, we can call it oxidative stress. I think people have heard that term. We use it a lot here. And oxidative stress is this generalized term of what happens when there is uh, different kinds of toxic and stresses to the body and our body's responding to that. And it produces inflammation, our, that our body's response is inflammation. And so we know we don't want that going on and we want things to help our body to deal with these stressors and with this inflammatory response. And what are those? So if you have oxidative stress, we talk about antioxidants. So I think you can start to see that connection between all of the essential oils and we talk about how they are incredible antioxidants. But first we wanna talk about nutrients because you kind of want that plant phytochemical antioxidant um, information coming in, meeting together with vitamins and minerals and nutrients to help our body deal with these stresses. And what do we love more than anything to do that? We love the Lifelong Vitality Pack working on the inside to get a healthy outside. So Louise, you wanna come on and kind of give us some, some of your insights about working with uh, proper cellular nutrition and the Lifelong Vitality Pack to help with a healthy skin? You bet. Um, <laughs> I would like to just point out that um, Josie was talking about oxidative stress and the sun is a stressor and that our body needs to deal with but um so is metabolism of food and so is exercise oh. and so is just living life so um it's all about this balance uh it's a game of balance so we don't want too much oxidative stress so that's why we want to control uh how much how many you know toxic stressors we're getting because we know that our body is designed to uh, deal with those stressors uh, through our nutrition and our cellular health. So um, I think we'll probably go into that a lot more with the sun in terms of like a little bit's good, a lot not so good, uh, and that's true with emotional stressors and mm -hmm. toxins and all those different things. So our our line of defense, if you think about um, biochemistry, so biochemistry is kind of all the different uh, reactions that are happening in our body, and they all require cofactors. So um, it's like one thing turns into the next thing, but it can't turn into the next thing, and that might be a super important antioxidant like glutathione, but you can't take vitamin C and turn it into glutathione if you're missing the cofactors. So our um, Lifelong Vitality Pack is such a balanced way to get all those basic nutrient cofactors that we need for all our biochemistry. So You've probably heard me talk before, and <laughs> Josie says the same thing, which is that as naturopathic physicians, we're trained to be really picky about um, our supplements that we recommend, that we use professional grade supplements. We don't recommend, you know, people just buy them at Costco or Trader Joe's because you don't really know what you're getting. And so for the first few years working with doTERRA, I love the oils. I was using the oils all the time and I pretty much just ignored the supplements until I was teaching classes after classes after classes. And I kept hearing these amazing stories about how people's life was being changed. So I, you know, got into it a little bit more and uh, started recommending them for my patients as well. So what we have in the Lifelong Vitality Pack, if you're not familiar, it's three uh, supplements, and they're just such a great foundation for all our health, our physical health, our mental health, and definitely our skin. Um, so we have the Microplex VMZ, which is our multivitamin and mineral, and that's like a food-based, really uh, 
um, really accessible to, to our cells. It's not um, synthetic vitamins or those super high dose vitamins that you get that make your expensive pee. This, these are really well formulated to be absorbable into our body and really usable. So those are providing all those cofactors that might be missing. Even if we eat a healthy diet, sadly, our, our um, food supply is bereft because our soils are uh, missing a lot of their nutrients. Next, we have um, the alpha CRS, which is a bunch of antioxidants. So when we talk about reactive oxygen species or oxidative stress, uh, these antioxidant is like taking a fire hose to all that inflammation and just bringing it down. So very important, the alpha CRS for all the inflammation and toxic stress that we have in our lives. And then lastly, we have our, um, our fish oil supplement, our Z Omega, uh, which is fish oil, land and sea, um, a really great formulated blend. And if you don't know, we used to, in our normal diet with, you know, grass fed meat and fish and different plants that we would eat, our intake um, of these omega-3 fatty acids was much, much higher um, than it is today. And now we're eating all these like seed oils and processed foods and um, the ratio of the good fats to the bad fats has really changed. So taking your um, omega-3 fatty acids is really good, really important for the brain, the heart, the joints, the skin, and again, all those anti-inflammatory pathways. So um, it's kind of like, I like to tell people like, you really need to moisturize from within. If we're, mm -hmm. if we're putting crappy oils into our body, those oils get incorporated into our cells and then our cellular structure is, uh, is compromised. So feed your body the good stuff and you will shine from within. Oh, that's fantastic. You know, and one of the things that really blew me away was um, a couple years ago, Dr. Jody Anderson, right in our community, she runs an aesthetic clinic and she's, she's kind of has all the bells and whistles and, and, you know, fancy stuff for doing things to, to make your skin look amazing. And she had this Vizia machine, which is like a many, many thousands of dollar machine that would scan someone's face and give you this, remember the readouts, all these readouts about everything that was going on with it. And she did a study when she started, she fell in love with the LLV too. And she said, wait a minute, she's an MD. She's not an ND. So she's not as rooted and based in nutrition and this connection between nutrition and everything else. And so definitely the skin. And so she said, I'm going to do a study. I'm going to bring in patients who are doing all the things. And then ones who start with the LLV and do all the things and look at the difference. And she was blown away. She did a study and the ones who were using LLV, everything was significantly, significantly better. And she could not believe it. I mean, I could believe it, but she could not, she was like, oh my gosh, we, so that was an incredible kind of feedback right there that we all got within our community around that. So, all right. I would like to introduce Contessa back. Contessa, can you introduce yourself a little bit and then right, come on and give us a little background about kind of like skin and sunburns and, and what the heck is going on there? Definitely, thank you for having me. Um, my name is Contessa Beth, she said. Uh, I have a small uh, company called Floating Root um, which is about uh, foraging wildcraft medicine and making small batch wild medicine. Um, and also just the concept of floating root um, has become my philosophy, the greatest lesson I have learned from the plant world. Um, and the company is also about uh, using nature, using plants and looking at it like the tarot and reflecting back health, wealth, and beauty um, that we receive from the natural world. So that's really been my focus. And I've also been a doTERRA advocate and just member of doTERRA for the last 14 years. Uh, and they certainly 
got me on this plant path. And it was extremely starting on a path of very potent medicine. And um, I've kind of been going backwards. I started with extremely potent medicine and now I'm um, gently backing up to more energetic and the softer side of the plant world. Um, but I am really passionate about unveiling the potential that plant medicine has in our pharmaceutical run world and in our consumer run world. Um, so I wanted to start off, I think for me, hopefully for you, understanding what the sun is doing and what a sunburn is really will inspire you to get a little bit better at using the preventative practices because this, this practice of skincare is really preventative based as they were talking about with the LLV and nutrition. Um, so with our sun, as we have it now in modern day, we have UVB rays, which are the rays that create the sunburn. It's a very surface, they're a very long way or a, a shorter wave and they hit the surface of your skin and they are what, it's kind of like sticking your arm in a microwave. You get the burn literally because it burns you as like a firewood. It's radiation and it burns the skin and can cause things as blisters, um, peeling of the skin, but it's reparative. That damage that's done on the top of the skin, we have the ability to regenerate our skin cells there. When we go to UVA rays, those are the rays that go in deeper into deeper levels of the skin. And that unfortunately is harder and less easy to repair. So that's where more of the damage is being done. It can change your DNA. Um, it can, those are the layers where we're dealing with skin cancers forming and it's a very slow process. So you're not gonna see the effects of the UVA rays for a longer amount of time. With UVB rays, you see it instantly, usually like 30 to 45 minutes after you get out of the sun you will very um, visually be able to see what happened to you under those rays. And the third kind of ray from the sun is UVC rays. They're much shorter. They're potentially the most dangerous, but our ozone layer protects us from most of them. Obviously in today's world, some are getting through, um, but we really need to be working with UVB rays which is that topical burn that happens. And what's happening with the UVA rays, which is a deeper kind of medicine where antioxidants, um, all of that preventative is really helpful. And I just wanted to mention a few kind of like tips since we all live all over the world. Uh, I think we're all in different places on the planet. Um, over 90% of UV rays can penetrate like clouds. So when you talk about living in Portland, yeah, 90%. And even being in shade, I think I have that here too. Shade can reduce UV rays by 50%, but just 50%. <laughs> um, shade can be very relieving. And if you are overheated and burning, find shade, absolutely 100%, but know that you're not 100% protected. Um, sand reflects up to 25% of UV rays. Mm. At half a meter depth, UV rays uh, is still at 40% its intensity in water. In water, okay. So. Um, like when you're in, you know, half a meter, that's pretty far down. That's what pretty far oh, down. No, a meter is a meter three feet. So you're saying one and a half feet down, but you're in the swimming pool, you're underwater. You're still when getting you, burned. Mostly when you're at that. Yeah. If you're scuba diving, if you're, uh, what's it called? Snorkeling. Snorkeling, anything like that. I can that. attest to that. I got a terrible burn on my back one time when I was snorkeling in Hawaii. I forgot, <laughs> you know, because you're looking down and you're like, this is great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, UV radiation increases by 4% for every 300 meters increase in altitude. Mm. The people who do skiing, 
this it's really intense when it comes to snow mountains and skiing because you have that increase of four percent for every 300 meters plus snow reflects 80 percent of uv rays wow back up at you so <laughs> um just hopefully i don't want to be a doomsdayer but like hopefully those thoughts make you think before you go out and do your activities go out for longer than 10 to 15 minutes um i just want everyone to kind of think about those circumstances where you live how that affects you mm -hmm. Nikki Dean right. said, yeah i know i aisha did you have anything you wanted to add in about like living in a cloudy place i know we we're kind of you know talking about that a little bit oh yeah i think contessa beth covered it i she just did? okay yeah, I know for years I was very resistant to wearing sunscreen because of the clouds in Portland and I just thought it wasn't necessary. And it's really been in these last few years that it's really um, been impressed upon me the importance and I've taken it much more seriously. So thank you for talking to that because I think it's easy to dismiss that in different climates. Um, someone's asking in the feed if you can repeat that Contessa Beth, the sand and the water, um, how much is, how much, what are the numbers? Sand reflects 25% of UV rays. Water, 40% for every half meter. Okay. All right. So that's kind of like, the, you know, let's get informed. Well, now let's, let's be like, what are we going to do about it? <laughs> <laughs> So I think let's, does anyone have any, is there anything in the feed, Erin, that we want to talk about before we move on? I, I would love to hear Contessa's DIY, do-it-yourself kind of prevention and some of her amazing things, I think, first, and then we'll talk about the new doTERRA sunline, or how do we, yeah. what, are, what are people feeling? We just got it in the mail this afternoon. It just came out, y'all. So that's kind of exciting, but Contessa has some amazing um, formulas to kind of combine with this. Yeah, uh, so a few years ago, probably four years ago, I was um, on a solo backpacking trip in Guatemala, very close to the equator. Um, and I found myself out in the jungle at a hostel that had no, I had no options to buy anything, um, had forgotten my SPF, didn't forget my oils, had a huge amount of oils with me. Um, and so I came up with this sun soaking recipe because of this experience that I had. And then after this experience, I came home and I was like, I have to know why this is working <laughs> or why this worked. Um, I didn't have any SPF. And so I used this recipe. Can you go back to the, the other one? Yeah. Um, I was using this recipe on my face uh, in hopes that I would not turn into a strawberry because I was in the sun. Uh, I was sleeping in a hammock. I was outdoors yeah. all day long wow. in bright, bright sun. I thought I'd be in the jungle, like covered in plants. I had no idea there was going to be open sky. And, um, but I was in the sun all the time and I would come home every day, just kind of like freaking out that in about 40 minutes, I would turn into a tomato. And every day where I put this sun soak, I happen to be okay. I'm not saying or promising that for anybody or anyone else. This is just an experience that inspired me to kind of go further with this recipe and explore it a little bit more. Um, and I wanna talk about really quick, what I find most exciting about the plants is we think about plants are in the sun 100% of the day. They are soaking in the same UV rays and are underneath the same UV rays we are. Why are they okay? <laughs> Why don't they burn in the sun? Um, and aromatic plants hold chemicals that protect the plant from UV rays. Um, most recently, they've been able to delineate this down um, and it's called cinepool malate and cinepate esters are the chemical in the plant that are absorbing um, the UV rays wow. to such amazing 
conditions that they do not burn, right? Um, and obviously we need UV rays. They, pro they provide so much life. Uh, the plants need it for photosynthesis. Like we need sun to create chemicals in our body to be healthy. Um, so what I was thinking when I was reading this is like, oh, well, maybe this has something to do with how I got through all of this. Um, so essential oils, we all know, penetrate the cells being damaged by UVA and UVB rays because we know essential oils can penetrate down to the cell level. Essential oils contain antioxidants preventing and addressing free radical deterioration. Um, and in this recipe, I also have an important component um, that I wanna talk about, which are carrier oils and in particular, seed carrier oils, which um, with the research they're doing on plants, uh, a, lo a lot of the, like every, every plant uh, we know has a certain level of sun protection that the plant provides for itself. They all vary in how much. The seed carrier oils tend to have more protection um, because they are filled with vitamins and fatty acids nourishing and hydrating. They have extra antioxidants. And then they also have seed carrier oils also have a dilution and a spreadability that's creating an actual layer of protection on our skin. So this is this, what I'm calling the sun soaking preventative practice. And this is what I did in Guatemala every morning. And I reapplied. I want to very much emphasize that that this is something you also need to be reapplying every one and a half to two hours. So you just take, it's very simple. I'd like to line up all my oils in front of me, take the caps off. Yeah, can you read it out for our podcast people, how you do it and what, and the, the ingredients and how much and how you do it? Certainly. So I take my frankincense, sandalwood and myrrh and I unscrew the tops and put them out in front of me. And I grab my rosehip seed oil, which is what I'm using as my carrier oil. And I first take frankincense and I put three to five drops in the palm of my hand. And then I take one to two drops of rosehip seed oil and put that on in the frankincense. Tap my hands together and I first apply this to my nose, cheeks, forehead, chin and lip. All the sensitive, very thin layer of skin areas. And then I lastly swipe over my neck, ears, under eye. Um, and then usually you have like a little bit of layer of extra on your hands and you don't want it to go to waste. So I pat it on in those sensitive areas and then also onto the back of my hands and the tops of my feet if I have any excess on my hands. So this is a layering process. I do this in a layer and that's why I open everything at the beginning. So it's a lot easier and a lot faster to kind of go through this process. Next, I do the same exact thing with sandalwood. I take three to five drops of sandalwood in the palm of my hand. I add one to two drops of rosehip seed oil, and I repeat that same process. Apply to the nose, cheeks, forehead, chin, and lips, and then lightly swipe over my neck, ears, and under eyes. And then any excess I have on my hands goes on the back of my hands because I always burn. And what I did burn in Guatemala was the back of my hands and my feet, the tops of my feet. <laughs> Um, are very exposed to the sun rays. Obviously it's coming right down on you. Um, and that's kind of how I was gauging, okay, is my face staying protected because I'm doing this preventative practice? And at the time I was not putting it on my hands and the tops of the feet. That is a lesson wow. learned that I hope to impart here. Um, okay, so we did the sandalwood and then, we're, and then after that, those are the layering. And then you're gonna take the myrrh and this one, you do not use a carrier oil. Um, and this one, I do 45 drops and pat over the entire area. And I pat, 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 pat. And I call it seal and soak it in. Mm. Myrrh, myrrh is a resin. And I kind of look at it similarly to a carrier oil, carrier oil where it's a thicker viscosity. You are actually like creating a... Uh, Myrrh is known as like a sealant. It has this like liquid band-aid effect on our skin topically. 
it can seal out bacteria and microbes. Um, and so I kind of put this on the top as like sealing it in. And I have this vision of elephants covering themselves in mud because we're not the only individuals who burn in the sun. Animals do as well. Uh, and they know they need to create a physical barrier on their skin in order to protect their skin from the sun. Um, so that's how I kind of think of myrrh is kind of like putting that mud. We do that too with our SBF um, sunblock. We have the kind that creates that white cast on your skin that is creating a physical barrier, the mineral sunscreen, in order for the UVAs to bounce off of. Uh, so that's it. You do the frankincense at rosehip, apply sandalwood, rosehip, apply, and then soak in and seal it in with the myrrh. Um, I have another recipe, which is for your body that you can create in a bottle. Um, and you take a one ounce glass bottle, which is roughly 30 milliliters, and you fill that bottle with one bottle of frankincense touch, which already has the, the fractionated coconut carrier oil in it. You take one full bottle of helichrysum touch, one five milliliter bottle of sandalwood, and then the rest five milliliters of your desired carrier seed oil. Um, and if anyone doesn't know what I'm talking about when I say a carrier seed oil, uh, one of my favorites is rose hip. I work with roses in my floating root company, so I am very <laughs> committed to rose, rose hip seed oil. It is chock full of vitamin C, tons of vitamins, but a lot of the seed oils are. So I have a list of really great um, protective seed oils that you can go to. I want to point out that jojoba seed oil. I believe is at the top of the list as far as how much protection it's giving your skin because of its waxy quality. I think it's actually, again, putting that seal on, uh, like a protective seal on top of the skin because it has this waxy viscosity. Then avocado oil, rosehip seed oil, sunflower seed oil, pumpkin seed oil, yarrow palm from doTERRA. I am so excited about putting this into the routine because pomegranate seed oil is really hot right now um, for protecting the skin from UV rays. Uh, and then of, of course, fractionated coconut oil you can use and sesame seed oil. It is best if all of these oils, carriers, seed oils that you're using are cold pressed, virgin and organic. Um, all right. Yeah. Here we go. That's great. Uh, See, I have a couple. Josie and Contessa, real quick. I put yeah. it in the chat, but I want to make sure everybody knows that doTERRA has rosehip oil and it's amazing. It's a blend of rosehip and um, I can't remember what else is in there, but it's our sensitive skin oil. Mm -hmm. And it's so, so lovely. I totally use that all the time. Yeah, I use it's so it's really nice. I'll, I'll here, look it Aaron, up it's, it right here. I'll read it's a blend of um it's rose hip seed Oh, it's not the sensitive oil. It's the other one. It's the carrier body carrier oil. Oh, it's isn't it sunflower too? It does not have rosehip seed oil in it, Erin. I, I I thought that too. The sensitive one, the sensitive skin doesn't. Oh, I'm wrong. I thought it did. I could have sworn it did. Sorry to be It real. does. It does. Okay. It doesn't say <laughs> rose. No, hold on. Do not. <laughs> We're on live here. It is grape seed oil, rosa canna seed oil. That's rose hip seed oil. Rose hip seed oil, yeah. It's rose hip <laughs> seed oil, grape seed oil, hemp seed oil, and sunflower seed oil. Seed, yeah. seed, seed, seed. Seed, seed, seed in this one, in the sensitive one. And then we have this other body one, which has jojoba, um, and then also moringa and macadamia nut and sunflower. Wow, 
So we could yeah. take Contessa really Beth's neat. recipes and we could make our body one in the body oil mm -hmm. and we could use the sensitive skin oil as our layering pat, pat, pat. Yeah, and one thing I'd like to, I have, I have, I have two comments with, thank you so much, Contessa. Those are fantastic. I really love them. I love, I love going deeper in with the layering and that specificity. I have a little hack that sometimes like that um, I do all the time. So it's not just like going into the sun. I do it in the winter. I do it all year round, but I also then have it as my first layer um, before I go out into the world, before I put on anything or any sunscreen or other moisturizers. And it's similar. So when you look at your three ingredients of frankincense, sandalwood, and myrrh, it starts to sound like a familiar formula maybe for some of us. If you add it in there, rose, helichrysum, and lavender, what would you have? Immortel. So yeah. I like to take an Immortel bottle and I save up my empties. And once I get one Immortel, I pop off top and I plop it into my old empty. So I have two Immortel bottles that are only half filled. And then I fill up about the rest, that second half, I'll do about a third to a half of it with yarrow palm. And then before we had those other, those oils, I, I did buy the rose hip seed oil and then I'd fill it with the rest with that. And that is really it over. I used to have, I had a recipe that I did call face caviar and this is what I do instead. Basically I do this all the time now. And one of the things that, you know, that I found out because of that high content of the vitamin C and I think other things in the roads, hip seed oil, it's very much known for really helping to lighten sunspots, right? The brown spots mm -hmm. and together at night, you know, you never want to put citrus oils on your face you know, you want to wait 12 hours. You don't want to do that with any sun, but if you just do this with your nighttime sun routine or skin routine of, I do, um, a mixture of lemon one to one to one lemon frankincense and rosehip seed oil on my mm -hmm. face and, and really on, on my, my, um, brown spots. And it has dramatically been fading them. And I have other friends as well. Like that is the big pro tip. <laughs> there for people as well. I think you said something really important, which was you do this practice all year round, which yeah. is, it should be. Like now that we're in summer, we're obviously all focusing on sun care, but it, it, it is a practice you should be doing in every season of the year. Yes, there are less rays pounding your skin in the colder seasons. Uh, the sun is farther away, but it's still, we don't know the damage that it's doing on that deeper level. And just because you're not getting a sunburn doesn't mean there's not damage being done. So I know because I'm one of those bad people that doesn't do anything in winter in Portland. And look, I have a little brown spot here. Louise just said black spruce is good on spot brown spots too, right? So I have, I have that right here. I'm putting it on right, right now. Hi, <laughs> All right. So what else? Do we have any other shares before we go on to the doTERRA sunscale um, and talk about that, the new line? I have a coming share. Up yeah. So I love this, the thought of like what you do every day. And I just kind of naturally gravitated to this habit that I've now probably been doing, I think for like seven years. Um, because I do live at a high elevation and I feel like we're always exposed to the sun here. And I love the plain doTERRA lotion, the one that comes in the big blue tube that's unscented mm -hmm. because everybody gets to make their own scent that works for them. But I put every day, two drops of lavender, two drops of frankincense and two drops of copaiba in there, the lavender and the frankincense for their anti-cancer properties for their uh, anti-inflammatory properties. And also I think it makes me kind of a walking diffuser of calmness, which I need for myself, <laughs> very grounding. And the copaiba, which can help support uh, collagen production. And just putting that all over my skin every morning, every evening. And I feel like it's my insurance policy, like for my body, like this yeah. is better for me than what I pay for my monthly healthcare. Cause I feel like I can feel the difference. And, um, 
I don't know. I'd love to hear what other people mix that oil, that uh, lotion with if people use that and there's other combinations out there. My, I have to give a shout out for that lotion. And then I'll, I'll talk about my, that lemon protocol thing. Um, my mama is super sensitive. She's very and fragile. And she usually is like, you know, she has arthritis and even frankincense. She's sometimes like, no, 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 no. <laughs> and so, but she, and she wants like creams and she, I mean, she, yeah, she says no to almost everything. She loves that cream. Like, <laughs> that's her cream and she will not be she runs low I'm like I gotta be ordering that stuff and that has what has allowed her to start to use frankincense and some of the oils is putting it with the cream yeah and so but the moisturizers in that how that works on um, more fragile skin older skin with like um, impaired circulation it has been uh, incredible for my mom so it is a very very great cream for people it's great with eczema too uh, Can you all repeat again what the cream is? I have it on my shelf. Hold on. It's, it's, the it's in a turquoise. Lotion. Yeah. Yeah, it's the unscented doTERRA body cream. It's just it's straight good. up unscented. And it's kind of in a in turquoise too. Yes. So the unscented body lotion from doTERRA. Many yeah. of us use it as a base, what I do, Nikki, to answer your question is I do a different oil every day. So I just like, I'm kind of the type of person who talks to my oils, they're my friends. So I'll just be like, who wants to be on me today? And then I put a few drops in the dollop and use it that way. It's a great product. Okay, so, about, oh. oh, sorry, I just wanted to cover, people were asking about what I shared I haven't made it up in a separate container yet with ratios. I, I just, at night, I'm in my bathroom and just like Contessa Beth does where she, I do one drop of lemon, I do one drop of frankincense and I do have a, my own separate um, bottle of organic rosehip seed oil. That's just straight organic rosehip seed oil. And I do about three drops of that and I mix them together. And then that's what I pat on my areas that's how I do it. And Josie, can you repeat again? Is that for uh, sunspots, age spots? What's the purpose? Yes, of it? it's for age spots, for fading. Fading age spots. Age spots. And Let's and remind someone, everyone that you would never do that during the day and go out. You only do that at night. Little lemon. Yes. Only at night. Um, and then someone asked about collagen, oils that support collagen production. Let's talk about that. I know that um, cedarwood, is one of it it works on all three levels there's three different levels of our skin and different um, types of collagen support and cedar wood is incredible for that i believe also rose can anyone contested can you um do you know that with rose i mean rose is one of the ones that helps uh capture and drive in using rose together with vitamin C. Vitamin C is a driver. You want a nano type of vitamin C that can really absorb in with the skin. And guess what has nano vitamin C? doTERRA's brightening serum. And using that together with rose, rose is a huge hydrator. So helps hydration and the vitamin C drives it to the deeper dermal layers of the skin. And so gives you that hydration down deep in the layers. And then when you combine cedar wood with that, you're helping with collagen production. So the, I, I, those are the things I know. I confirm cedar wood is one of my favorite oils to use on the face. Mm -hmm. you, you see the results so quickly. Very similar to myrrh. I find myrrh also, you see the results like almost instantly. Um, I just wanted to, oh no, did I lose my thought? Uh, Oh, before we go into the into doTERRA's new sun care line, I just wanted to um, add like the other reasons we're using essential oils as a preventative for sun care, particularly is those same like antimicrobial, antibacterial, anti-inflammatory, all of these things that we know about the oils. Uh, because we are taking in all these other toxic things throughout our day, digestion, 
uh, stress, emotions, um, pollution, all of these things that are stressing out our bodies to begin with, the oils are addressing those things. And then when the, when the sun stress comes, your body is already working on its anti-inflammatory. Uh, if you do get burned and you start to have blisters, then you're dealing with bacteria and sweating and all of these things. So the oils are addressing so many different layers. And I know the doTERRA Sun Care line has a list of doTERRA oils in it. And I'm assuming that that's why. Yay. Erin, do you want to introduce the sun? The, our, our first three, we have, we have the first three things of the Sun Care line coming out right now. Absolutely. And Erin and I just got them in the mail today. So first I'm going to make a confession, which is I have purchased sunblock from another network marketing company up until today. And I am so glad that I now get to purchase sunblock from myself and actually make my own commission. And why I'm saying that is this other sunblock I've been purchasing for many years, I really liked. It was really, really good. And I was a little scared that when I would get this in the mail from doTERRA, that it wouldn't live up to my other sunblock. And I am here to say that it is even better. So this is the face and body lotion. I put some on earlier, but I'll do it again for everybody. It does not leave a white residue. It's not too greasy. It's not too chalky. It's doesn't smell bad. It actually has very little aroma. That's face and very body. little aroma. We were all like, very, wait a minute. There's heart. Yeah. So wait, Erin, very little aroma. And then we have, um, oh, go why ahead. You, why, wh why is it white? Like, why are you worried about that in the first place? Maybe we can talk, or do you want to go through them all before you sure. talk about like what's sure, in No, them? we can talk about that. So when you go to the drugstore and buy sunblock, most often you're getting a chemical based sunblock that is not really good for your body and it's really bad for the reef. So if you like to go snorkeling, if you live in Hawaii, if you like to visit these places, the sunblock that most people are using is killing the ocean. Period. Killing the reef, killing the fish, like it should be illegal that it's are even sold. So luckily you can do mineral sunblock. However, mineral sunblock is basically made out of this white stuff called zinc oxide. And usually you put it on your body and <laughs> yeah. you look chalky. You, you look, look like, like a big marshmallow. You, yeah. You, and you can't rub it in. You're like, I can't rub it in. I can't rub it in. I can't rub it in, but it's much better for us. It's better for the environment. It works in a different way when it's actually um, taking care of the toxic sun rays. So we want the mineral sunblock, but the other thing that happens is sometimes it doesn't work when you buy natural sunscreen. You'll get it, you'll rub it in, it'll be all white, and then you'll go out in the sun and you'll get sunburnt anyways. So to me, I want a mineral sunblock, but it's extremely important that I rub it in and there isn't a white residue because that tells me that it's absorbed into my skin and then it's also just um, an aesthetic purposes that I don't want to look all chalky when I'm out enjoying the sun. So I think doTERRA really hit the mark there and I just did the training so help me remember chemical sunblock absorbs, absorbs the, all the the UV rays whereas mineral sunblock reflects it away and i'm like what's it absorbing it into right <laughs> what's that what's going on there what, what, like, what kind of like reactions happening in or on my skin about the absorption and the trans that i don't like that we do not want to absorb the toxic sun rays into our skin we want to reflect it um but we were talking before everything started here and it is kind of important when you're using a mineral-based natural sunblock that you reapply more often than you would with a chemical based sunblock. So I just took my girls to the lake yesterday. We were there all day long and about every hour we do a reapplication. Everybody just comes out of the water, has a snack and we reapply. So that's important. Um, the doTERRA also put it in a stick. So this is nice. You know, if you just need to rub it there and rub it there, 
of it there. Um, I like this for the kids because it's going to be easier for them to use on their own. They're at an age where they want to do their own sunblock, and I can now hand them the stick. That'll be great. Wait, 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 wait. All right. No, go ahead. Okay. So this is like a regular sunscreen, like a good one, like it absorbs in and the, and the things. Um, this stick, I was like, this feels like a yummy, like I want to totally moisturize my True. skin. We're like, what's True. in here? Guess what's in here, y'all? Yeah, it has shea butter, cocoa butter, and vitamin E. That's going to go on my ashy elbows. I mean, this might become like it does feel thing. Really Chris good. always gets eczema patches and they get all itchy and he can't sleep and stuff like that. Like, I think this might be something he's going to love and want to use not in the sun, maybe. Okay, so you're talking about a product hack here, which we should have a call all on product right. hack. <laughs> like, Oftentimes saying, their products have is, un <laughs> advertised uses, right? This feels really nice. On, while like, while so we're talking, one, but like, while we're huh? talking hacks, it was yeah. recommended it could also be used as a highlighter as you're oh. doing your makeup. So you oh. can also use it that way. Okay. All right. A highlighter with sun protection. And then, it. you know, the spout that like moves around that's on here and it's look here's a spray this is really great for like the kiddos so these sun care products have essential oils in them too which i think is really cool one thing that's interesting is they put red mandarin in it and we're always like don't use citrus oil on your skin and go out in the sun well red mandarin is one of those citrus oils that has very little of the fuma camera can't even say it can anybody say that word? The fumicamarins? Oh, fumo, L yeah. Furanocumarins. 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 So, that's the component in the essential oil that makes it photosensitive. So the red mandarin has very little of that. And then when you dilute it in the skincare line, it's not going to be photosensitive. So you get the powers, like Josie's saying, I put lemon on my face before bed, so I don't get exposed to the sun. They put red mandarin in here to get the powers of that citrus oil, even though you're out and about in the sun. And the other oils I found interesting, they've got lemongrass in there. If you Ylang Ylang, they have magnolia. And what they're saying is they've studied these oils and they chose the oils that are the best for protecting and wow. nourishing your skin. So the product that isn't out yet, but soon is an after sun spray. I can't really see that, but I'm super excited about this one to spray on after you go out in the sun. And one of the things that we were learning in the training is what it's important what you do on a daily for prevention. And it's important that you use your sunscreen, but it's also important that after you've been exposed to the sun, you're doing something to nourish your skin. So Contessa's recipe is great for that. The doTERRA sun is going to, the um, after spray is going to be great for that. And essential oils in general. Um, I think it is important for us to just pause and reiterate, why are these essential oils so great for our skin? And know that doTERRA is looking at the different oils, researching the ones that have the healing benefits, the nutritive benefits, the cellular protection benefits. Um, and I have lived in Hawaii and I can tell you just like Contessa Beth was saying that the essential oils applied to my skin before and after and during sun exposure really reduced the amount of burning and some sun damage that I received. So we're excited. You can buy this. Go ahead. I just want to say, cause I was yeah. so excited reading about the cocoa butter and the shea in this one, the base of these two is aloe vera, raspberry seed oil, and vitamin E. And then all of the essential oils, and then the non-nano zinc oxide. And so this what is not, not green that you're gonna... Yeah. It's and I just wanna read what's not like, in like, here. What is not, not okay. what's not in here are any parabens, phthalates, oxybenzone, benzene or any synthetic fragrances. It's 
good stuff. Good stuff. Um, Joyce is asking if we can have Contessa's skincare recipe again. Would you bring that up on screen? You can screenshot. It's a great time to say too that we send out all the protocols in an email on Wednesday afternoon. So go to our website, hellovisionary.life to get signed up for the email so you can get the protocols sent to you. There you go, Joyce, if you wanna take a screenshot of that, or you can wait for the email. Contessa's sun soaking recipe for your face. It's interesting. Okay, so when, go ahead, Contessa. I just found it interesting as you're reading off the ingredients for the doTERRA line, um, cocoa butter, shea butter, shea butter, again, seed oils. It's coming from the seeds. <laughs> they just find that interesting. And also the magnolia and ylang ylang. Um, I was listening to like what oils they are picking. And it's fun to kind of like think about why are they picking those specific ones? And to me, when I think about that, I think magnolia leaves, those are those big, thick, waxy, strong leaves. So do ylang ylang. Ylang ylang has these really deep green leaves. And it's just interesting to think like, are those the plants that are providing the most amount of UV protection uh, out of what doTERRA has available? Absolutely. Because we know that the plants have so many gifts for us. And I think that's really what we're um, learning from doTERRA and we wanna share with you today is sunscreen is important but it's not just about sunscreen. It's about the oils you're using and the carrier oils you're using. Okay, you can take that down, Aisha. And I want to make sure you know how to buy the skincare line or how to get essential oils if you don't have it already. So if you are a leader in doTERRA, <clears throat> meaning you have reached the rank of silver in the last year, or you have been premier and you went to the leadership retreat in uh, Arizona, you can go into your doTERRA back office right now and look up leader sun bundle and purchase the kit for $107 wholesale and it'll come to you right away. If you are a doTERRA customer, you can purchase it July 1st and you can get it as the whole kit for $107 for each item individual, they're between 20 and about $30 each. So you can add it onto your loyalty rewards order and get the points for that. If you do not have a doTERRA account yet and you would like to get some essential oils that we talked about, the skincare line, we have a special going on and it ends in a couple of days at the time of this recording. It's set to end June 30th. I hope they're gonna keep it going because I think it's been really popular. And basically what it is, is you can get your wholesale membership free. It's normally $35 for wholesale membership, but you can get it free if you purchase 150 PV worth of product. So you can go on July 1st, and get the whole sun care line, then I would add in maybe some of the oils Contessa Beth talked about, or you could just add Immortel, which has a lot of those oils in there. Maybe you wanna grab some cedar wood because you liked the collagen producing aspects and just make sure your order reaches 150, then you're gonna get the enrollment fee waived. So talk to the person who invited you to this call if you need some help getting started, if you don't have someone, you can just send us an email, go to our website, hellovisionary.life, and we will help you get started. So we're at the top of the hour. I'm gonna go ahead and close the call. Thank you so much, Dr. Josie, Dr. Rose, and Contessa Beth for everything that you shared today about keeping our skin healthy and glowing and vibrant. We promised that we would cover a few aspects, so I'm just gonna make sure we hit the mark. What is so cool about essential oils, the three cool things? Well, the first cool thing is that they are affordable. The second cool thing is that they are effective. And oh my gosh, I forgot what the third cool thing is. Where did my brain Inexpensive. go? Inexpensive. 
I said that I said affordable. They're effective. Oh, safe. 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 Thank you. So safety is super important with what we're talking about today. Do not, do not go to Amazon. Do not go to your local health food store and buy some essential oils that aren't doTERRA. They probably won't have the same benefits we're talking about, and they may have some side effects that you're not happy with. I've actually had someone that got a really bad rash from going to the grocery store and picking up essential oils that aren't doTERRA. So we wanna to talk to you about the three ways to use essential oils. We've talked a lot today about topical because it's the skin, right? Why the oils are so great topically. You can also use them internally. So put those great citrus oils in your water, drink it down. You can put the yarrow palm under your tongue. That helps your body produce more collagen. That's an internal use. And then the other way we use them is aromatically. So that's smelling them. When I apply my helichrysum or my frankincense or my rose to my face, I'm getting the benefits of it in my skin, but that aroma is also balancing my hormones, uplifting my mood, and it's even killing airborne pathogens. We love doTERRA so much because of their dedication to purity and potency. These essential oils work and they are going to be safe for your whole family. doTERRA is dedicated to sustainability if you want to learn more about that, go to YouTube, look up doTERRA, co-impact sourcing. You're going to learn all these incredible stories about where the oils come from. And then doTERRA is dedicated to leadership. They're a completely debt-free company. And what they love to do is they love to empower people financially so that we can all be free to give. So that brings me to something super exciting about being a part of doTERRA in our community. If you want to share, if you feel called to educate people about natural wellness and essential oils, doTERRA will actually pay you a commission. So make sure when you get your account started, you do it as a wellness advocate and then invite some friends to our next call. We actually have a holiday coming up, right? So in uh, the United States of America, it's 4th of July. So we will not have a call on July 4th. Then July 11th, we all jump over to doTERRA's Empowered Success webinar, and we learn from some of the doTERRA owners and some of the leaders in doTERRA. So we will be back here the following Monday. So that is the third Monday from now, which is July 18th, and we are talking about how to go from being frazzled to fabulous. We're going to talk about two really big topics sleep and stress. So we're going to take two weeks to cover that. So if you know anyone who is stressed out, can't sleep, dealing with frazzled emotions, invite them to the call on Monday, July 18th. You can get all this information on hellovisionary.life. Be sure to sign up for our newsletter so you get the protocols sent to you in an email, sign up for our text alerts, and we will see you back on this call next time. Bye, everybody. Hi, thank you.